Chao, mabuhay! You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word Incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. We are on the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In today's Gospel, we would hear the familiar story of the feeding of the crowd, about 5,000 in number. They were able to feed all of them because of the generosity of a boy who had five barley loaves and two fish, which Jesus blessed. St. John tells us that when everyone had their fill, the disciples were still able to collect 12 wicker baskets of fragments from the five barley loaves. This sign made the people to realize this is truly the prophet the one who is to come into the world. Friends, we must remember that with the generosity of the boy and Jesus' blessing, there was abundant food for all. First Reading a reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing to Elisha, the man of God, twenty barley loaves made from the first fruits and fresh grain in the ear. Elisha said, Give it to the people to eat. But his servant objected, How can I set this before a hundred people? Elisha insisted, Give it to the people to eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat, and there shall be some left over. And when they had eaten, there was some left over, as the Lord had said. The Word of the Lord. and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all His works. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers All our 
Second reading. A reading from the letter to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. One body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, and through all, and in all. The word of the Lord. There is food for all. Now, when we hear news of hunger in many parts of the world, the lack of food, the lack of clean, potable water, when we see、uh, images of children suffering from malnutrition, and then we also see how much food is wasted. Are we not scandalized? And、uh, you know, this is not just a scandal. This is a sin. This is a sin. We should be disturbed. Our readings are really good news that we should receive. But as we receive it, we hope it will convert or change our mindsets. In the first reading from the second book of Kings, Elisha, the prophet, the successor to Elijah, as a holy man receives offerings, barley loaves and grain. Now you know he was known to be a holy person, and so he received. These gifts or offerings from believers, having received these gifts, he instructed his servant to give this food to the people. So the gift that he has received now he wants to be given as a gift to the people. My dear brothers and sisters, let us let me repeat that: the gift he has received, now he wants to give as a gift to others. The servant was more practical, calculating. He said, uh, uh, "No, how can this、uh, be sufficient for a hundred people? We have twenty barley loaves." And some grains, we are feeding a hundred people. This is not possible. So when you calculate, you know, yeah, he's he's telling the truth. But then El- Elisha said, "Do it." Thus says the Lord. Aha! While the servant started calculating. Elisha just depended on the word of the Lord, the order of the Lord, the Lord who wants gifts to circulate, and the servant did as instructed. They were able to feed the one hundred people, and there was a lot left.、Over. 
The gift circulates. And when the gift circulates according to God's word, then everyone is satisfied and there is something more left. In the second reading, St. Paul is talking of another gift, not the gift anymore of bread and grain, but the gift of our calling, of our calling to be disciples of Jesus. He said, do not waste that gift. Exert every effort to make that gift permanent. But how? How can the gift of being a disciple of Christ endure? How can it be permanent? Not by locking it in a closet. Not by keeping it and preserving it and saying, this is mine. No. The gift of discipleship, your vocation, remains a gift and will become permanent if you get out of yourself. If you go out of yourself. If you share that gift to others. How? By being gentle, humble, loving, by bearing with one another, by living in love, by preserving the unity and peace that should mark the community of disciples. The gift you have received, now go and give concretely through your relationships with others. For you are called not only to relate with God, but to be part of the body of Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, the gift that we have received, a calling from God, a talent, resources, they should remain gifts. What we have received, give as a gift. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to John Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so the men reclined, about five thousand in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord 
There is food for all. Yes, food is a gift of God. And as a gift, it must continue becoming a gift. But why does the gift stop becoming a gift, producing hunger, malnutrition, and then in other parts of the world, so much wasted? Why can they not be continue becoming gifts? In the first reading, Elish, Elisha received 20 barley loaves and some grains as an offering to him as a holy man. He instructed his servant to feed a hundred people with him. And the servant was right. How can that be sufficient? But the response of Elijah, thus says the Lord. Let us rely on the Creator. Let us rely on this supreme giver. This Lord promised they will eat and there will be something left. And it happened. A gift remains a gift. And there will be much more for the next meal. In the second reading, St. Paul talks about another gift. Not any more bread, but our calling. We should share that gift of discipleship through gentleness, humility, forgiveness, love, unity, and peace. This is the gift we have received as disciples. Let us share that gift and build up the community and build up humanity in peace and unity. Do not keep or waste that gift. In the Gospel from St. Uh, John, we are close to the Feast of Passover. And people were flocking to Jesus, for they had seen the signs of His healing. The signs in the Gospel of St. John were supposed to be avenues towards faith. They should help people discern who is Jesus and who sent him. Okay? And people were in that process. They were beginning to see signs. And we hope that they will come to faith through those signs. Now Jesus had an idea. He saw the crowds. And according to the gospel, as the feast of Passover was coming close, so you can almost... Uh, relate this to the Eucharist. Jesus knew what he want, wanted to do, but he sort of tested his disciples. So he asked Philip, no, where can we find food for this people, for they're hungry? And Philip, calculating in his mind, because there were around 5,000 people, he said, woo, to feed this crowd, we need probably 200 days wages, the salary uh, of 200 days so that we'll have uh, enough money to buy food for 5,000 people. And uh, we don't have that. <laughs> we don't have that. Andrew came and said, well, there is a boy here uh, who had five loaves of bread and some fishes. But again, how can that be sufficient? But Jesus, Jesus heard, but did not even debate with them. He just shifted. Let us prepare the meal. Let them recline. He took the five loaves of bread, gave thanks, meaning he recognized these are gifts. You give thanks for gifts. And then distributed the bread. And he did the same with the fish. Everyone had food. And there was something left to fill 12 baskets. With the gift, the meager gift 
from this boy in the hands of Jesus becoming again gifts of God there is food for everyone and there is food for others who need food later on gifts without forgetting gifts unfortunately in our world gift is not anymore the determining mindset profit and when you are driven by profit you reduce gifts even the gift that you are capable of giving gets reduced conquest you try to uh, get more land and that's the the purpose of many of our wars right now no one wants to give they just want to claim by all means reducing people to hunger my dear brothers and sisters this is a scandal this is a sin let us learn again from jesus and from this little boy gifts must remain gifts and put them in the hands of jesus who will give thanks to the father and in the act of thanksgiving will give food to all there is food for all the word has been exposed let us now fulfill it agree that young people have a special role in God's work of salvation? David, for example, was around 15 years old when he was anointed king of Israel. The wise Solomon was in his early 20s when he became king. The prophet Jeremiah was also young when God called him to become God's mouthpiece. And in fact, God told him not to feel insecure due to his young age because God will be with him. Even Mary was young when the angel proclaimed God's mission for her and she accepted it. In the feeding of the 5,000, it was a boy who offered his five loaves and two fish to Jesus, which satisfied the large crowd and they still had baskets of leftover bread. This means that young people have a special place in God's mind and heart. He trusts them. He has confidence in their capabilities, talent, and openness. Thus, when the Catholic Church went through a renewal through the Second Vatican Council, the young people were specifically addressed. The Council recognized that the youth are the ones who would form the society of tomorrow, that amidst many challenges, they might witness to the certitude of the existence of a just and good God, that they might see in the church the face of Christ, who is their companion and friend. Brothers and sisters, it is a joy to work with the young people in different ministries in the church. They possess knowledge and talent, passion and creativity. They have much energy and many stories to share. 
but quite sadly, they are also vulnerable to many things that weaken character and judgment, that discourage and frustrate them, and they prompt, that prompt them to walk away from the church. And we cannot exactly blame our young friends, brothers and sisters, because we adults are not always good examples. But we can offer the best model that they can look up to, Jesus. Pope Francis reminds our young friends that Jesus' love is unaffected by one's failures and mistakes, that in walking with him, one would find someone who would carry with them the burdens and difficulties of life. Will you walk with Jesus? We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, what social factors prevent God's plan of providing for all? Anong mga aspeto sa ating lipunan ang pumipigil sa pagsasakatupara ng plano ng Diyos na bigyan ng biyaya ang lahat? The second point is, how can we be agents of God's bountiful love Papado tayo magiging mga instrumento ng pag-ibig ng Diyos na nag-uumapaw. Heavenly Father, You have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, Please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed. <music>